Welcome to EVO 10 ECU Flash Training Part 17. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our boost control. Now, the factory Mitsubishi ECU is going to be referencing boost in units of load. And the load's calculated from our mass airflow sensor and the map sensor together. So all kinds of tables reference load. Our spark timing tables, our MyVec tables, our throttle tables, and many more are gonna be load-based. And that's gonna be the same here when we're referencing our boost control. So the ECU is gonna reference a load target to achieve a boost target. And then we're gonna find, uh, depending on what the load's going to be at, if we're over or under that load target, it's gonna be manipulating the duty cycle output to send to the boost control solenoid or solenoids, depending if it's a rally art or EVO 10 application. Now, we can get rid of this load-based boost control and implement a PSI-based boost control where we're gonna be referencing gauge pressure, which is much easier to deal with and much more familiar if you're working with other standalone systems or other systems that reference PSI rather than load. So I'm gonna be showing you how to convert the file over to a PSI-based boost control, then also taking a look at some data logging examples so we can get a feel for what to look for when we're checking our data logs and trying to dial in our boost control. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check everything out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our boost control in our EVO 10 ECUs. We're going to find that we have both the mechanical side of things and then the virtual programming side of things that we actually go here and work in our software. We need to understand what's going on mechanically so that when we're making our changes and programming them here in the software, it's going to make a lot more sense rather than just moving values in here that may kind of have a disconnect between what's going on physically, mechanically, and what we're trying to program here uh, virtually. So let's talk about the mechanical side of things. Now on our EVO 10, it's going to be fitted with a turbocharger. The turbocharger is going to be connected to the engine with the exhaust manifold. As our engine runs, it's going to have a certain amount of flow and pressure coming out of the exhaust manifold that flows through the exhaust manifold into a what's called a turbine housing. The turbine housing is connected to the turbocharger itself, and we'll find within the housing is going to be a turbine wheel. That wheel is going to spin faster and faster as we feed it more pressure and flow out of the engine. Now, the turbine wheel is going to be connected on a common shaft to a turbo compressor, and the compressor is going to spin faster and faster with the turbine wheel spinning faster and faster. Now, as that compressor wheel spins faster, it will generate more flow and more positive pressure out of the turbocharger, and essentially we're going to get more boost out of our turbocharger as that turbine wheels can, can spin faster and faster. Now we're going to find that we're going to get into a situation where if the turbine wheel keeps spinning faster and faster, it will start to generate too much flow out of the compressor and too much boost pressure, and we're going to overboost on the engine. So we need a way to regulate the amount of exhaust gas going through the turbine wheel, which is the function of a wastegate. So the, in the stock EVO 10, we're going to have what's known as an internal wastegate. The internal wastegate is going to have a diaphragm connected to a swing arm. The swing arm is going to be connected to a flapper mounted onto the turbine housing. So as the engine runs and the, uh, the internal wastegate is, has boost reference going into the top port on the wastegate, it's going to be opening up the swing arm and then going in and dumping out the exhaust gas or the excess exhaust gas that we don't want to run and bypassing the turbine wheel, not letting it spin fast, and then going through the, the, the downpipe, through the exhaust, and then out um, into the atmosphere. So we'll find that the, uh, the internal wastegate is going to be the way that we have ability to regulate the amount of pressure going through the turbine wheel to avoid overboosting. Now, if we're talking about an aftermarket turbo setup, generally speaking, we're going to have an external wastegate. The external wastegate is going to have that same kind of concept. It's not going to have a swing arm uh, that we'd find on an, on an internal wastegate. The external wastegate is going to have a valve that opens or closes, similar idea to an intake or exhaust valve in a cylinder head. So as the valve opens, it's going to be dumping out the amount of uh, exhaust pressure to not go through the turbine wheel so that we regulate the boost to where we want to hold that. So we're going to find it's going to be the difference of just the, 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 the functionality, um, the, the actual components of how it's going in and regulating that amount of pressure going into the turbine wheel, but it's accomplishing the exact same task. So the wastegates are what we're going to be controlling to regulate the amount of pressure going through the turbine wheel to achieve the boost that we'd like. Remember, our turbine wheel is connected to our compressor through that common shaft. So as the turbine wheel spins faster, it'll spin the compressor faster, which will generate more power, more boost um, up to a certain point every turbocharger is a little bit different, we will find that every turbocharger has a point where it doesn't flow anymore and we'll find that it's going to be what's known an inefficient operation zone which we want to avoid. So we definitely want to make sure that we're programming and working with our external wastegates correctly. Now whether we're talking about an internal wastegate or an external wastegate, we're going to find that we have to 
the Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.